Lynette, can you hear me? This is Aaron. Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, we are we don't know what happened. Like you know, technology works until it doesn't. But it's Friday, so we're we'll we'll be fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We'll keep an eye out for those that are still um, working out their technicalities. And I will start with roll call. Um, Angela Gamboa. Carly Feech. I'm here. David Carnahan. I'm here. Uh, Dr. Don Faust. Elizabeth Paz. Terry Stevens. I'm here. Thank you. Kathy Busby. Monica Curry. Dr. Rogers Wilson. Yeah. Mr. Thompson? I am here and just wanted to thank Mary for working with me to get all my technical difficulties resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she's been helping all of us today. So big kudos to Mary. Mary Boatwright. Right. Mary Boatwright. Thank you. Two Marys. Um, and Nicole Porter. Let's hop into our agenda. Their introductions for those of you that have not, and I will also send an email later. Um, please don't forget to submit your conflict of interest forms. I have them from just about everybody, but just a quick reminder for that. Next uh, slide, and Mary is multitasking, so um, we have media updates. Um, the old website has finally been migrated over um, to the new website. It looks really good. So take a look at that. You can still find it on the Wi-Fi landing page. It'll direct you to mental health charity. Um, and with that, the community brochure that we labored over last year is has been finalized. It is posted on the website at the address there. Um, it's downloadable as well, um, so you can download it and share it. Um, and we hope that um, it is a good tool to answer at least initial questions that people have for resources um, about the health parity crisis, um, complaints, and appeals. And so it is a living, breathing document. If we have to go back and modify it at some point, we, we can do that. But at least we have something to start with a year with, which is Awesome. So we can get it out to those rural areas that may not have access to the internet. And, so. and then the final media update, um, Mary did a training last year. We are working with our um, communications and IT department to splice that video just so it has that section of the training. And once we get that all um, worked out, we will also post it on the website and I will send it out to you. That way you can share it. But we. Um, we are working on that. I know people were emailing about questions, um, wanting the video. We are working on it. It's in process. Any questions on any of the media updates at all? Awesome. Next item on the agenda. I don't know if Jacqueline got on to. Give us an update on the suicide mortality program. I do see her. Um, Jacqueline, um, the floor is yours if you're ready. Jacqueline, can you hear me? Okay. 
I oh couldn't, uh, I didn't uh, have a mute button right there initially. And let me see if I can start my video. All right, looks like I am connected. So hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> thanks for asking me to uh, give you an update today on where we're at with the suicide, um, both the mortality review program and the suicide prevention program. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this is like my fourth meeting today. So, <clears throat> since I spoke to all of you last, I believe, um, I have hired staff. So, um, we are fully staffed now. I have a suicide mortality review program manager who has created the materials, forms, um, procedural manual, etc. For the suicide mortality review program, we have an epidemiologist and uh, we have funded uh, the county health departments, the local county health departments and um, have started the trainings uh, with all of the county health departments on how to conduct a suicide mortality review. Uh, we have just uh, Recently, January 6, completed our third training session with all of the county health departments, and uh, we will be having our next training in February. The county health departments are in the process of building their uh, local team rosters. Uh, we've given them guidance on how to build a team roster. And, um, and then uh, we will be reviewing team rosters for all of the local county health departments and approving those uh, at ADHS. So um, we are in the process of getting our team roster to director Don Harrington, the interim director at ADHS. So um, Don needs to review uh, the suggested um, team members and um, send out letters um, inviting people to be a part of the state uh, suicide mortality review program. As it stands now, our state team will review several of the smaller uh, jurisdictions suicides uh, like Santa Cruz, La Paz County, etc. Um, <clears throat> Maricopa County is going to establish their own suicide mortality review program, which, uh, at no surprise, the majority of the, the suicides in our state have occurred in Maricopa County. So they have the lion's share of the um, suicides to review. On another note, um, we have transitioned the suicide, the state suicide prevention program. Uh, from access to ADHS. Um, access uh, previously had Kelly Williams, who led the suicide prevention program for the state, um, and she resigned uh, last August. So with that, uh, we have hired a suicide prevention program manager, and uh, we received the funding that access had for that position as well as um, some Prop 207 funds uh, that we can use for prevention activities. So we are doing um, a reach out to, again, all the local county health departments <clears throat> and our new person is um, joining different uh, coalitions statewide and uh, working with local communities on suicide prevention initiatives. <clears throat> so that's about it in terms of where we are at with the suicide program. Does anyone have any questions? Um, that's really exciting developments. Thank you. Um, is there any way you can share who the new um, suicide prevention coordinator is? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I um, I will put uh, his name. I'll put uh, both of. I'll put all of the contacts for the suicide program at ADHS in the chat when I'm done here. 
But yes, I feel like uh, I have worked in state government for 16 years, and um, I feel like considering everything, and especially in light of COVID, uh, this has moved relatively fast for um, uh, government hiring and getting a, a new program established um, at the state level. So yeah, I, I'm very excited that we've been able to move forward and get our program fully staffed and get um, all of the trainings and the county health departments funded and um, get this new person. In fact, Joshua Stegmeyer is the new uh, state suicide coordinator and um, he just started this week. So Joshua is a 12 year veteran. He also has um, some clinical experience. He has a master's degree in clinical counseling and has worked uh, with families adolescents, children on um, the clinical side. So we're excited um, and we think he brings a lot of insight in particular in working in, with veteran population um, and has experience, uh, you know, working with veterans fellow um, while he was in the military that uh, had PTSD. So I think he's he did three tours over in Afghanistan and Iraq. So he has quite a bit of experience dealing with um, with the veteran side of um, things. Um, I have another question. Um, given the additional funding that because of Prop 207, will there be any like structural changes and how the and 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 honestly with the move with how the uh, office operates or the things that they are planning to do. Well, this is a huge task, as you can imagine. We're trying to get up to speed fast on what has been occurring across the state. So um, we have uh, taken our state. Uh, suicide action plan that was developed at ADHS. And um, I worked on that with Carla Berg, who's um, one of our assistant uh, deputy directors at ADHS and uh, with Kelly Williams from Access. So uh, Jessica Bell and I have uh, gone through the state action, uh, suicide action plan. We've also gone through Access's plan and um, we are working um, on AZ HIP, the health improvement plan that's done at ADHS, which is a five year plan for the um, state uh, health improvement. And um, so we're looking across all of these three documents uh, to determine what has been recommended for suicide prevention and um, I, coming up with a plan of action for how to use those funds. We're also working with the Arizona Department of Education and, um, and uh, other state agencies uh, that are working with us, uh, you know, um, child or adolescent suicide prevention. So we're looking at some collaboration on some media campaigns and, and uh, working with the schools on suicide prevention. So, um, you know, in terms of structural change, no, but we want to make sure that we're good stewards of these dollars and get them, you know, make the most efficient use of the prevention dollars that we've been provided. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome. So I'll enter the names of, um, I'll put all of our contacts in the chat for you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Anyone else have any questions for Jacqueline? I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I don't see what Jet or Ruth had on to talk about the hospital discharge rules. If you're on. have to come back to that. Maybe they're running late. Um, status of the rules. Um, we have some updates. I don't know if Mary, you want to um, start or if Mary Kavisky wants to start. Uh, sure. Happy to. Hi, hi, Dr. Hannigan. Um, so, um, 
So we um, we had some listening sessions uh, that we conducted. We conducted a listening session November 18th of last year, and we accepted uh, comments on the draft rule, which we exposed to the insurance companies until November 30th. And then on January 12th, we um, opened the docket and um, submitted a notice of proposed rulemaking with the Secretary of State. And that should be um, that should be published on February 4th. So once it's published on February 4th, that will begin a 30-day comment period from February 4th to March 6th. So during that comment period, one of two things can happen. Either uh, people can certainly submit comments about the proposed rule. Um, and we've gone through this before, but this is the same um, same uh, a procedure. So either they can submit comments or they can request an oral proceeding. If someone requests an oral proceeding, we have to schedule that 30 days after the request is received. Um, if um, if either the comments or the oral proceeding um, drive some substantive changes to the rules, we would be doing a supplemental proposed rulemaking and starting another 30-day comment period. But if there are no comments, or if we receive comments that we're unwilling to make the substantive changes for, um, then we would prepare a final rulemaking for publication in, uh, with the Secretary of State. But before we do that, we have to get permission from the governor's office to submit the final rulemaking to the governor's regulatory review committee. And um, let's say everything went well and um, we could get it in, get the rule and the final rulemaking into GERC by March 22nd then it would appear on their April 26th study session agenda and um, for approval uh, by the council um, at their May 3rd council meeting. So it takes about 45 days to get onto the GERC agenda. But in an ideal world, <laughs> um, we're looking maybe at a March submission date with an April, end of April and beginning of May um, a review by the council. And the council is just reviewing it to make sure that the rules are not overly burdensome. There are a number of uh, bases on which they are reviewing the rules. Um, and if they okay the rules, then we can submit it to the Secretary of State. And once we submit to the Secretary of State under the, the statute, which is ARS 41-1032, the um, the rule would be effective 60 days after the date we file it with the Secretary of State. Now, there are uh, there is a provision in that statute, which we can certainly um, we can take a look at, but um, uh, that statute allows us to request an earlier effective date if we would like to do that. And but we have to establish a basis for an earlier effective date. So the types of things we would have to establish is whether or not it should be effective earlier because to preserve the public peace, health or safety, to avoid a violation of federal law or regulation or state law, to comply with um, deadlines in amendments to our governing statutes or federal programs, to provide a benefit to the public and um, where a penalty is not associated with a violation of the rule or to adopt a rule that's less stringent than the current rule. So there's a number of bases under which we can, um, if you are interested in looking at getting a, an earlier effective date than 60 days after the filing date, then we can certainly discuss that once we get to that point in the process. So that's where we are. We're about to, it's already been sent over to the Secretary of State and we're looking for a publication on February 4th. So um, I'm assuming that when that um, we'll put something on the website once it's published and we certainly will, uh, we routinely uh, put an announcement on our website, you know, announcing that the public comment period is open and inviting people to comment. So 
uh, we try and uh, not just the register, but we also use the website to um, tell people about the availability for comments. Any questions? I know we've been down this road before, but I'm, we're optimistic that it'll be a little bit less um, rocky this time. Okay. Yep. Mary, this is Erin. Oh, yeah. Hi. Sure. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I guess I just wanted to kind of uh, maybe reiterate or reinforce some of the things you said. So, um, if every, everybody and anybody is, is, is going to be able to make written comments in response to the published proposed rule, um, if, if we get all of those written, I, I guess I'm going to ask Mary Kaczynski to confirm what I'm going to say here. Um, there's going to be a comment period. Everybody can submit written comments uh, within the designated comment period. Uh, if if we can handle those comments through the written process and not have an or another oral proceeding, uh, that can expedite uh, the process for finalizing the rules and get the rules moving forward faster. Right, uh, that's true. But we, if we get at least any anyone in the public can request an all proceeding. So Certainly. if anyone in the public requests one, we have to, we have to hold one. A absolutely. I, I'm not, not suggesting that, that, that we wouldn't do exactly that. I just wanted yeah. to highlight for folks that, that if, you know, written comments are certainly um, uh, very valuable to the department because then we have everybody's comments in writing and we know exactly what you're trying to say rather than uh, getting verbal comments and I, again, not, not, not wanting to um, discourage anybody from making that request for an oral proceeding. Should somebody want to do that, but, but just highlighting the fact that if, if we can handle the comments and, and feedback on the, on the proposed rule through written comments uh, that we can save uh, 30 to 60 days, I guess. I don't know if it's more than that, Mary, um, in, in terms of I getting- I would say 30 days because if we, well, it depends on what happens. If uh, if somebody requests an oral proceeding, we can hold an oral proceeding earlier than 30 days after the request. Okay. So that'll, that'll put 30 days on the schedule. Okay. Um, plus, if the comments drive substantive changes, then we start getting into a supplemental proposed rulemaking and starting a new comment period and in, you know, of which someone can also request a hearing. So that starts putting things further out on a calendar. Yeah. But in an ideal world, maybe we can, we might be able to get this in in March. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see, we, you know, we have no control. You know, the, the purpose of all rulemaking is to um, make it as public as possible. So, you know, it has a number of, opportunities for people to comment. Um, there's an open comment period, which we will soon be in on a proposed rulemaking, but then when it goes to the governor's regulatory review council, they also take public comments and consider those public comments. So, you know, it, it's, try, it, we, you know, every effort is made to try to fully vet the rules. So, so we'll just have to see what happens. We have no control over the public. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Any other questions? Okay, no. I'll, I'll, I'll stop my video. All right. Are we sure any more questions on the rules? Nothing? Um, future topics for upcoming meetings this year. Do you want to have any pressing topics that we need? We want to see on the agenda for us to discuss. Lynette. <clears throat> Hi, it's Aaron. I, I do not have a topic for a subsequent meeting, but would, would absolutely encourage anybody who has topics to, to speak up. But I did want to just take a moment. Um, and and let everybody know on this call, folks may be interested in, in case you 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 haven't noticed it on our website. Uh, the department did um, 
issue a, a, a regulatory bulletin, a substantive policy statement related to uh, prior authorization requests. And so if that's a topic that's of interest to you, I know it doesn't pertain specifically to this uh, committee, but I wanted to let folks know that the department had published um, the approved prior authorization request forms, the standardized forms that were mandated by statute. So if that's a topic that's of interest to you, I just wanted to kind of point you to our website to look for that. Thanks. I'd be curious to know how much traffic your uh, website is getting. If um, just some data, if you have that, I, I assume you track hits. I, I'm the least techie person to be explaining, you know, talking about this, but just can you, I don't know if you can even tell like how many people are looking at the brochure, or downloading the brochure or, um, or anything like that. Um, I definitely can ask um, IT if they have, I'm, I'm sure like you, they have a mechanism to do that. Um, the brochure was just uploaded I can't find it, when, Tuesday. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's had any traction this week, but definitely can work with IT and see, and then have some numbers for you for the next meeting. See what type of impact is had or how much, how high the touch is. That'd be good information for us to have it anyway. Thanks for that. Anything else? Yeah, I'm also curious, are you contemplating any more of the um, sort of the educational talks um, that the one about the you know quantitative treatment limitations was just so helpful um, and clear and just great visual aids. I wondered if anything more like that was planned. Yes, so we we do have some other ones work planned. We are working on one on appeals and complaints because sometimes people confuse the two and we want mm -hmm. to be able to make that clear um, to the public as well. So we are working on a few of those Obviously, we're trying to be mindful of what we want to do, like maybe a YouTube video to talk about some ideas um, and then post it if we can go out in the community once um, Omicron settles down and we can get out there, we look at doing that down the road. But yes, um, gotcha. and that, it would not be limited to those. We'd like to have some, you know, more explanation on the rules once they are finalized and, and things like that. So we're definitely looking at like an education series that we want to roll out later on this year. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone wants to give any feedback on topics that they think would be helpful? Um, we are open to the ideas if it's you know specific to what we're doing here in the department and with um, mental health parity. We definitely like to do that down the road. Lynette, I think um, there was some discussion at the last meeting about uh, the, uh, if I remember correctly, or, or or maybe it was other venues, I don't remember. Um, folks were interested in the public comments that the department had received on the draft rule before we published it as a proposed rule. And I just put in the chat a link to uh, to those comments, the department did receive uh, numerous subs, uh, substantive comments on that draft rule, and we did make those available to the public on our website. So I put the link in the chat. And thank you, everybody who who made comments. Those were um, they were very, uh, very helpful, and uh, we 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 are. We, we remain optimistic that that uh, that that informal process uh, helped make the rule better and will hopefully uh, help us uh, um, make progress going forward. Are there any other topics? We don't have a need for an executive session at this time. Uh, real there? quick, real quick, Lynette, um, Aaron, if you could double check that that link, I, I don't see it in the chat. Or in the Q and A, I'm not sure where where you. You put don't it. see the link in the chat. 
Is that what you said, Mary? Correct. Oh, uh, I did air include to all attendees, at, but you're not, you're not seeing it in the chat. Okay. No. Um, I didn't see it either. Interesting. Okay, Mary, I'm sending it to you. Maybe you can see if as the webmaster, whether <laughs> the WebEx master, if you can put it in the chat and it works. I don't know. I have one person saying they can't see it and someone saying they can, so. It's very weird. <laughs> well, at any rate, it is, if you go to DiFi's website and you go to our um, uh, our mental health parity page, which for those of you who who haven't navigated our new our new website yet, if you go to the consumer information tab at the top, learn about insurance, oh there's a, and then there's a mental health. Yeah, there we go. Awesome, Mary. There's yep. a mental health parity uh, link there. And if you, s yep, there you go. There's all the comments. I also tried to post it. So let me know if anyone is seeing. I post it to the panelists as well as to all attendees. Oh, good. So can folks see the link in chat now? <laughs> okay, good. I see Vista nodding. Awesome. Next scheduled meeting is March 18th. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Time back for your Friday. Thank everybody for hopping on today, even and powering through all the technical difficulties that we've had. Um, everyone has a great Friday and a having a good start to your new year, and we will see you guys in March. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Lynette. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.